Hey guys, Damon Fiore, Dark Raven Training Group. Up here in the mountains of northern Arizona doing some fishing. Been camping out the last couple of days with my boys and one of their buddies. Uh, you know, it was a busy weekend, a lot of folks up here. Saw a lot of UTVs, ATVs. Saw people riding without helmets, all kinds of uh, less experienced people um, on these different uh, uh, all-terrain vehicles. Got me thinking about the medical loadout. Um, you know, being up here, we're a long ways away from any type of trauma center. Uh, no cell phone service up in this region. And uh, just seeing all these people at varying degrees, little kids up to uh, large adults that could get hurt. Got me thinking uh, specifically about uh, orthopedic type injuries. Obviously, we can have head trauma as a result of riding UTVs or what we were kind of partaking in here, uh, doing a little bit of rappelling and whatnot. Uh, obviously, so falls, any type of uh, velocity, right, speed created through UTVs, uh, getting pitched off, thrown into one of these trees back here. We, there's a lot of trauma that can, uh, that can occur in this type of environment. Again, austere environment, um, cell service, that, that can be a whole nother discussion. But today, what I'm going to specifically cover is uh, the Kendrick traction device for femur fractures. Uh, you know, as you, any guys have been through my training before, you kind of know that uh, anything in the pelvis and down into the uh, femurs uh, kind of scares me a little bit, uh, mainly because the, the, the massive amount of blood that we can lose. The whole reason for stabilizing a femur fracture is to limit the amount of blood loss. So uh, here I'm going to cover the hair traction, uh, I'm sorry, not hair traction, but Kendrick traction device for use in uh, femur fractures. Uh, this device will work on a wide range of individuals. I'm going to simulate a femur fracture here. This is my son Tristan. He's eight years old. We're going to uh, just, you know, pretend for the sake of role playing. He's got some sort of suspected uh, mid-shaft femur fracture as a result of many different things we said that could occur out in this type of environment. And I want to stabilize that fracture. As I come into this, I've got uh, an ankle strap, kind of color coded. We'll get into that here in a minute. And then I've got stabilizing straps. They're gonna hold our down rod. Don't beat me up too much on the verbiage. I just know colors. I don't know exactly what all these components are called. I know how to put it into operation. This strap is designed to go around his waist. And then inside here, we have the rod that we're actually gonna pull traction off of. Now to get this uh, device fixed, first thing I'm gonna wanna do is get the waist strap on him. You can see I've got a receptacle here. That receptacle we're gonna want on the injured side. So assuming that Tristan has a right uh, femur fracture, I'm going to, maybe a lot more gentle than this, but I'm going to position get my waist strap in nice and snug to where the receptacle is going to sit just off of his right hip in that 90 degree position. Now we can see this is obviously way too long for Tristan. We'd want to size it accordingly. We got about six to eight inches off the bottom of his foot. That's about where I'd want to be. I'll see if I can get away with one more. And I, I think, if we bring the camera over here, I would think that's probably gonna be a little too shallow. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull off two down rods. As you can see here on the receptacle, he's got two inserts for the down rod. Now I can move on to the ankle strap. Make sure I'm nice and opened up. The yellow is what's going to be captured on the bottom of the down rod. Come around his ankle. Secure that. I've got a strap here that I can kind of size up to the bottom of his foot. I think we're going to be good right about there. Attach this yellow piece onto my down rod. Now, if I wanted to pull traction on him, go ahead and stand up over my shoulder. 
I would probably opt to have him try to push with his good leg onto my leg and then I pull traction. Is that pulling really tight, Tristan? I think we've got plenty of traction being pulled now. Now the rest of this device would go just like on a stoplight. Green light, yellow light, and red light. And now we would get Tristan into some sort of litter device to try to limit the movement. I might even opt to go ahead and lash his good leg to his bad leg just for the purpose of added stability, uh, either with cravats or Gorilla Tape, if that's what I had. That's, uh, that's great if we have a Kendrick traction device or some device similar to stabilize a uh, femur fracture in an austere environment. But uh, what if we needed to improvise? I'm going to show you a way that I learned how to improvise. Um, and when we improvise, we're looking at to try to utilize multifunction stuff, right? Things that we would normally have on hand. Uh, gorilla tape, black gorilla tape. If you guys don't have this in the back of your car, truck, uh, somewhere in your kit, I would suggest you do. A uh, very versatile uh, piece of equipment. 550 cord, we all love our 550 cord in the tactical environment. Uh, 550 cord we're going to utilize in this evolution. My day doesn't start without coffee. I prefer a bigger cup of coffee, especially in the application I'm going to show you, but all I have right now is a ceramic, just standard cup. Uh, triangular bandage, cravats. Again, this is a multi-use uh, functional piece of medical equipment. I believe it should have some space in anybody's loadout kit. And then to create our uh, down rod, of which we're going to pull traction against, I uh, took some tent poles off of an old tent we had. Um, I taped them up with Gorilla Tape. I've already done that. I've created a, a pretty robust pole. I would normally cut this to size it, but I don't want to take the time to do that right now. Um, I think at the end of this video, you'll, you'll kind of get the gist of what we're going to do. Okay, so we're going to assume that Rob has a... Uh, right mid shaft femur fracture. We don't have our you know, normal traction splint device, so now we're gonna have to improvise. I'd want Rob to have a belt on. He doesn't have a belt on, so I'm gonna give him the belt off of my waist, because that's what I would always do for you, right, Rob? Mm -hmm. All right, so I would lash the belt through. He's gonna need a belt. Managed to get the belt around Rob. Now, before I complete the belt, I'm going to take the coffee cup, all right? Drink it, push it down. It's going to go downward. This is going to become the receiver for our pole. Again, if you had a big plastic one, that might work better, but you definitely want a handle that would complete all the way through on the side of your mug. I'd get this as tight as I could. Okay, we're good there. Now, push this into the coffee mug. And then I'm going to, I'd normally take off a shoe, and I'm going to build him an ankle brace. Five fifty paracord. Good traction, Rob? Yep.
right now at this point, I would either use the Gorilla Tape directly over his legs. I'm not going to do that to Rob right now because uh, this will pull hair off. Or I would take cravats and bandage around. Rob, is that pulling pretty good traction? Mm -hmm. Feels pretty steady. It's a good way. And then again, I would push the legs together and I would cravat both of them together, splint the non-injured side with the injured side. Again, find a, a litter to get Rob extracted and we'd be on our way. So the whole reason why we're going to stabilize a uh, suspected femur fracture is mainly to decrease the likelihood the vasculature is going to be rubbed up on. We're going to injure that and we're going to cause bleeding into the, uh, into the thigh muscle. We can lose, I've heard, liter, liter and a half. I've heard up to two liters. Um, a liter is probably too much for me if I can try to prevent that. Now, something I'm, I'm going to uh, pitch at everyone Maybe a little controversial, but uh, what would be wrong with me going ahead and applying one of these? If I had a suspected femur fracture, go up high and tight, and I would opt to go with a couple of different tourniquets, go up high and tight on the injured extremity, and now psh, pinch off any of the distal vasculature. Now it doesn't really matter if that femur shaft rubs and takes out the, uh, the, an artery or a blood vein, because I'm gonna have it controlled with this. Now, the way that I have Rob, uh, Rob done up here in my improvised hair traction, and I would probably wanted to apply this beforehand, but I would say if I was going to do this to Rob, just me as a provider, and we can argue it, feel free to load up my uh, comments section, uh, arguing good and bad. Uh, I can take it. I'm a big boy. But why not? Why not go with two of these? If I've got some fentanyl, um, ketamine or whatnot, I can keep Rob comfortable while he has to wear these tourniquets, but I know that this will stop any distal blood loss. Good medic part friend of mine, uh, medic partner, a few years back, motor vehicle accident, guy was wadded up really bad, prolonged extrication. My medic partner uh, realized the fact that he was bleeding inside his uh, thigh. Tristan, get out of the camera, dude. Medic partner, friend of mine, realized that this MVA uh, victim uh, <clears throat> still pinned inside the car, prolonged extrication. He was bleeding into his thigh. Uh, my medic partner buddy took out a, a tourniquet, applied a tourniquet high and uh, tight, as proximal as he could, onto his uh, injured extremity. Uh, that guy held on by a threat of life, and I do believe it was because of this. So again, we equate this with gunshot wounds, blast injuries, traumatic amputations, but why not any type of, say for instance, a closed femur fracture, we, we suspect there is bleeding occurring internally. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, again, I'm just trying to throw out some tips and tricks, things to think about. Uh, feel free to perfect me on anything that uh, maybe you saw that I could have done differently. I'd love to hear about it too. This whole thing is about trying to share the information because it may, may be me one day that's going to need your help. Thanks again.